President Trump today applauding the Republican Party's plan to cut the corporate tax rate and efforts to simplify the tax code. A lot of good things are happening, but this is the final element, tax cuts and tax reform. And it's an honor to work with my fellow Republicans. I think we're going to actually have some Democrat support. I think it's going to be very, very hard for them not to support it, because this is a middle-income tax reduction, and it's a very big one. It will be the biggest tax reduction in the history of our country. But there is some Republican dissent here. New York Congressman Lee Zeldin today said he would not support the tax reform legislation until the state and local tax deduc deduction issue is fixed. Our next guest is also a New York lawmaker, a Republican. Joining me now, Congressman Tom Reed. He's a member of the Ways and Means Committee, which begins marking up the bill on Monday. Congressman, good to see you. What do you think of Mr. Zeldin's decision? Well, you know, obviously I respect uh, my colleague and, and I understand his concern. Uh, and we've been working together uh, and as well as the committee to come up with a solution that works for uh, folks uh, like Mr. Zeldin and others. And I think we're going to get there. This is about doing what's best for the people back home. And by doing what we're doing on the property tax deduction, we're giving a lot of benefit, a lot of reduction uh, in taxes to people back home. Well, you don't have much time for, to, to develop a compromise, do you? I mean, you got to you got to really assuage a lot of his disagreements and other Republicans from the state of New York, from the state of New Jersey, California, et cetera, uh, who have similar problems. Well, yeah, and, and we're going to get there. I mean, we started at the complete elimination of the state and local tax deduction. Uh, I was opposed to that. And now what you see is a good faith uh, attempt to find a solution. And we've gotten uh, that with the property tax deduction. There are other issues in this bill that we're going to continue to fine tune as we go through the process. But I'm very confident they're workable because if you come at this from a good faith perspective and you do it for the benefit of the people you represent, not the top one percent, not your donors. And that's where folks are looking at it. And once we deliver that for the people back home, I think we'll be able to solve this and get this to the president's desk by the end of the year. But, you know, right now, Mr. Zeldin is in kind of odd company for a Republican. Uh, New York Governor Cuomo, who, of course, is a <laughs> big Democrat, said New York will be destroyed. Those are his words if, if they're not allowed, if New Yorkers are not allowed to deduct state and local taxes, to which I would say, don't voters have a chance to vote with their feet? If you don't like what your state is doing in terms of taxing you so much, you need a deduction of those state and local taxes. You can go to Florida. You can go to Texas. That's a great point, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, if the income tax uh, structure of New York State is driving people out of the state like it has been for decades, why don't we solve the root cause of the problem? That's an out-of-control spending in the state capital. Get the taxes uh, going down, going in the right direction. Now you solve the problem. But at the same time, we've got to look at the federal tax burden on people. These are people that are struggling. I, right. I, I listen to these folks, and I will tell you, I hear their story. And when we can deliver $1,600 as, as a result of tax reform to them, to allow them to keep, yeah. you know, that's a visit. Uh, to uh, take a senior, to go visit a, a grandkid who had to move out of the state because their, their well, parents or, or had an it's opportunity a, in New York. It's a year's yeah. worth of gasoline in your car. You got it. Uh, you, got you know, it. This, is, uh, this gets to a point that Newt Gingrich was making earlier today. Before the plan was released, he talked about how important it is, even if it's not perfect, to get the plan passed. Here's Newt Gingrich earlier today. I'd like it to be as big as possible, but I want it to pass. I'm, <clears throat> I'd like it to have as much reform as possible, but I want it to pass. They're going to have to maneuver some. Look, that's the legislative process. I mean, the whole point of the legislative process is how do you get the votes? I mean, Newt would probably like a flat tax of 15 percent on everybody. Sure. But any move at all to, to, to lessen the burden on Americans' tax bill is to be applauded, is it not? I agree with that 100 percent. And I'm a Ronald Reagan guy. I'm a Jack Kemp. I come from Western New York, New York where Jack Kemp hailed from. 80 percent. If you hold out for 100 percent, that's part of obstructionism and gridlock. People want us to get things done here. 80 percent of the loaf is a victory, not a defeat. And that's what we're delivering with this tax bill. Congressman, what about the Senate? The Senate uh, stalled uh, the health care changes. Will they do the same with tax cuts? You know, I think one of the great differences and the lesson we learned uh, through this process is we've been working with the Senate and the White House, and we are kind of all working off the same sheet of music, if you would. Hmm. Uh, that gives us a foundation that's different than the health care bill. And I think there's going to be some differences in the Senate and the House bill, but we'll work them out. We've got the conversation going where we're talking with each other. At the end of the day, we'll be united, and we will be in the White House signing this tax relief for the American people because they deserve it. It's their money. Very Let's let them keep quick more of it. question, because a lot of Americans 
Americans want to pay less in taxes on their very next tax bill. Will this be retroactive for all of 2017? You know, to be honest with you, I, I'm not as optimistic on that because uh, there is a huge price tag to that. And also just administratively, but doesn't the that mean, forgive me else, for but, interrupting, but doesn't that mean that that you won't have the growth necessary uh, to help you out in those midterm no, but, elections? No, I, I do believe, you know, when you look at things like immediate expensing, the reduction of the corporate rate and, and, and people's withholding tables being changed immediately on January 1st, that means more money in people's pockets. That means businesses can now invest the money in their businesses. You're going to see this growth and you're going to see it be long-term growth. We're not looking for gimmicks. We're looking for mm -hmm. generational reform here.